No, mind me. I'm just losing my mind over here because my desk is a mess and it's too cluttered and I can't put stuff down and it's like Recording falling over. Recording in progress. And I'm like, I'm sorry. you ever get like overstimulated by clutter? Yes. Oh, that's, buddy. That's, <laughs> yes. that's, Every day. And yet nothing stops me from making more clutter. Oh my gosh. Like that's, that's just, it's just, it's just where I am right now. It's just. Justin, it's too we, much. It's too much. If we have time later after this recording, I will share with you my new discoveries about my own anxiety. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Tim just realized he has anxiety. Just now. <laughs> like three just days now. ago. Well, like, yeah. I, I mean, like, okay, we, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> well, you know, I went to uh, therapy for the first time in since like January of 2021 today. So oh, good nice. job, nice. man. Nice. Proud That's of you. Oh, I really need well, to get on. you know. Insurance is a nightmare and finding a therapist mm-hmm. is also a nightmare. And yeah. 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 I understand that. And then finding one who takes your insurance who doesn't suck. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's rough. Yeah. My last there one, was one really sucked. There was one who had like good reviews and I was like, oh, I should go to this therapist. And I was like, well, let me see what their negative reviews say. And uh, this is, this is like some, some B roll worthy worthy content honestly um which wow snapchat used to like show all your saved things at the top of a conversation no it doesn't that's annoying um yeah basically um he talked about himself and then he told the person that the reason why they were having so many issues was i want to say Man, I want, I want, I want to say it was aliens, oh. but what? That, that that might not be right. That might be that might be someone else. No, like my therapist. Check your. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> this is the Always More podcast. Hello. September 18th, and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there is always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we are talking about telepathic children, Mormon mom swingers, solving mysteries, mythical foods, and so much more. But first, I am your host, Tim Lichty, and sitting next to me is my best friend in the whole entire world and zombie apocalypse survival expert, Christopher Thomas Ford. My whole zombie apocalypse survival thing relies on the fact that I don't get sick. Well, we've established this. (laughs) Honestly, like, I mean, beyond the the zombie thing, like, if I get throw up sick, it's game over. I'll just die. (laughs) I don't want to be sick in a zombie apocalypse. I realized that today. It's not confined to zombies. If I'm not there, I will also just die. Uh, the, and also joining us, the guy who puts the sin in Wisconsin and long haul trucker, Justin Johnson. Yeah. And joining us, as you've heard already, our special guest, the woman the alternative was based upon Janelle Saffron Ford. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Look at that. Janelle joining us finally after many of years just I've been on the begging, sidelines, begging and just begging to get her on this podcast. And she always tells me the same thing. <laughs> but finally tonight she came on the podcast she came on the podcast i'm pretty happy about that i like to point out she almost like died laughing when i did the intro here and it nearly threw me off too i've never <laughs> seen you do it what's crazy is i wasn't sure if it was pre-recorded every time <laughs> I'm sure if it was pre-recorded yeah because it's it's like it's such a methodical thing like it sounds the same every time it's because I'm, I'm just that good, good. job thanks he's consistent yeah. mr consistent if i may that's right Sometimes I, actually, I like to try to throw ladies. them off. I listen to like all of the episodes. So it like, you know. Don't you listen to all of the episodes that have Harley in them. And this one now. <laughs> actually, would you be able to listen to your own voice? Oh, God, no. <laughs> probably not. I like your voice. I'm going to try it and then probably die. Turn it off in the first five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. I listened to yeah. the last one that Harley wasn't in because y'all called me out in the first five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Wait, which one was that? It was unhinged. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was. Y'all need a, it was, y'all need it was a Wrangler. It was just you, me, and Tim, Justin. <laughs> y'all a, need a Wrangler. Yeah. It's another reason why Nell's on the episode. Honestly. <laughs> After that last one, no. Yeah, I feel like if we don't have Harley, we need to have someone else who can... Harley needed a really break. Really just raining, Chris. Yeah. What? <laughs> I feed off of you. I'm not saying you were the only problem, but I'm saying if you're not reined in, I'm not reined in. You're saying in. I'm the cause of the problem. You're the you're the flint of it all, my friend. You you feel the fire. Yeah. I'm No, I literally told him, I said I had a dream that I told him you need to stop pretending to be a bad person because Harley's starting to believe you. <laughs> That wasn't a dream. You actually told me that. Uh, no, I had a dream about it, and then I told you because I felt like I needed to. That is fair. <laughs> oh, man. Well, either way, we're glad that you're here. Thanks. All right. Well, hey, we are going to move this show along. Uh, we have some great things to talk about, including some things that are down Janelle's wheelhouse. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to start out with our, our original, our classic, Little Wreck and Rev. This is the part of the show where we like to recommend, review some items that we've seen, heard, smelled, or anything else. Uh, Chris, you're first. What we got? So mine is probably the most wholesome recommendation on this list tonight. <laughs> um, I watched a movie Lame. called Spy Family, Code White. Oh. It's a lovely little anime surrounding a telepathic child who was adopted by a spy because he needed a child for his mission mm-hmm. to get in with the, I guess the governor, prime minister, the president, whatever you want to call him, of this country that he's spying on to get in with that guy's kid so that he had an entryway into that family so they could be friends and he can gather intel. But he also needed a wife because just having a child is weird and nobody's going to want to be that guy's friend. So he married a woman who is secretly an assassin. None of them know the other secrets. So the Dad, who's a spy, doesn't know his child is telepathic. The mom, who's an assassin, doesn't know her husband's a spy and vice versa. Nobody knows she's telepathic, but the kid knows that her dad's a spy because she can read minds. And her mom is an assassin because she can read minds. And it's, it sounds crazy, but it's a really wholesome anime. It well, sounds like Spy Kids uh, without the reveal. Well, I was going to say Spy Kids and she Mr. and Mrs. Smith combined. Time. Yeah. Yes, but also a telepathic child. Just thrown into the mix. Okay. It is delightfully. It's it just it's so it makes me feel good. It like, does. It's such a good. Have you show. watched it? Of course he's watched. Okay. It. Yeah, I oh. I actually haven't watched it in a while because I was watching it with uh, my ex girl I dated in Texas, and uh, I haven't watched it since I left Texas. So watch I need to get it. back into it. Season two is great. And they put out a movie recently where they go to a different country to find a recipe because Anya, the child, needs to win this cooking award so that she can get a Stella, which is a star that allows her to get into this exclusive club that the president is in charge of. So she tells her dad, hey, I need to cook this thing. And her dad's like, well, I'm a spy, so let me figure out what the judges like the best. And the judge likes this dessert from she's this telepathic. very specific country. I guess they don't know that she's telepathic. Yeah, and she can't tell okay. them that she knows this because then they're going to be like, how do you know this? And that's one mm. of the things she does. She's like, oh, I could just tell Papa. <gasps> but then he'll know. <laughs> like, how do you know this? You're telepathic? I'm sending you back to the orphanage. Oh. And it's like her biggest fear. <laughs> but it's, it's done very sweetly. Anyway, the dog can see the future, which is also hilarious. And it, it, it all kinds of... Insanity ensues. It's a great show, great movie. Watch all of it. It's delightful. Right, yeah, and the only person the dog can communicate with is Anya. Yeah. Because he, he's a dog. He doesn't speak. Her favorite TV show is Bondman, which is a James Bond ripoff. Mm. So she names her dog Bond, and it's really cute. <laughs> also, right. Anya reminds me of my daughter, so, you know. Well, of Super. course. Here we go. She's a little red-headed kid. Calls her parents Papa and Mama. It's adorable. <laughs> she's, I think she's like four or five, but she told him that. her name is that Anya. That's. They told him, or she told her dad that she was six, so he would adopt her. Oh. But she's very clearly younger than that. Well, I wonder she, if that's inspired by it. So in Anastasia, she's introduced as. Maybe. Mm. That's cute. Found her in an orphanage. And she's a redhead. Anya. Yep. So probably. There you go. Something for everybody. All right. I'm in. Uh, Justin, you're next. 
Um, I'm continuing the trend. For, uh, I believe on the last episode, I recommended uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, <laughs> I'm still knee deep, hip re, deep, re recommend neck it. deep in that <laughs> world. Specifically, no, I'm not re recommending it. I this week I'm going to recommend Final Fantasy VII. Crisis Core <laughs> Reunion, my man. Which is Crisis Core was originally released for the PlayStation Portable back in a long time ago, 2008. I was, I was maybe? in high school. Yeah, it was yeah. a long time ago. Um, but they made a remake uh, from PS4 and PS5. Been playing through it. Um, I honestly would have beat it if I wasn't recording this podcast tonight. Um, I'm right at the Sorry. end. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't complain. Don't complain. I still might beat it afterwards. We'll see. Probably not. Um, it's great. It's fantastic. The combat was a little wonky. Uh, it's not a perfect game, but the story, the world building, the lore, excellent, fantastic. If you like the story, it gives you so much more. And considering events of the remake that differ from the original, it's relevant to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, mm. which is the next one, which might be my wreck and rev for the next podcast. Just, Who just, knows? I don't we'll know. See. Just go down uh, the line. <laughs> how, how did the gameplay transfer from PSP to PS5? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. So the remake's gameplay is pretty similar. Um, remake still follows like more of like the... the it like take it's like a middle ground between uh crisis course gameplay and the original's gameplay like it has the same like uh battle system where it was like the atb meter determines how fast you can do certain actions but like guarding you can change the control so that they match so that you're guarding or attacking all that stuff is the same but yeah it's good i love it uh i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten but if you're a huge final fantasy fan i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Yo. Wow. Here for it. All this is all over my head, but I'm so happy. I'm copying my paramours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nell, you're next. My Wreck and Rev is a show called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So about two years ago, um, there was this woman that went viral on TikTok. She lives in Utah. She was married, had two children, and um, I don't remember how exactly, but her secret lifestyle was exposed, I think on Reddit or something, and they were having what they call soft swinging parties. So everything but all the way. Penetrative sex, I guess. Soft swinging? Soft They're swinging. Soft so the swinging. whole friend group was doing it. That's a new term for me. It, well, I am it, yes. impressed. Gen it was Z for me too. Base. Gen Z third base. But everything, <laughs> everything but penetrative, I guess. Yeah. So they butt they, stuff it sounds like it's on the table. What kind of butt sex are you having, buddy? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like everything but vaginally penetrative sex. So mm, butt stuff. I didn't say vaginally. Oh, just oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> not but I, I don't know for sure. I wasn't at the parties, so hand, hand stuff. Anyways, so <laughs> just hand stuff. No, and mouth stuff. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this the main creator on TikTok. Her name's Taylor Taylor Frankie Paul. She decided to go live names. and. <laughs> just be real about it and own it. And she didn't name people, but she said, yeah, this is what we did. I was part of it. Nobody was innocent. And yeah, that it is what it is. What a phrase. Nobody was innocent. <laughs> oh, I've seen Ain't so. That <laughs> she just decided to be really upfront with it. And it went viral. It went crazy. And a lot of people are like, but you're a Mormon. But she's not like a traditional looking Mormon person. So there was a lot of scandal there anyway. Plus, she was always making TikToks about her biggest rumors about like she's not even 30, but she would talk about like being 50 years old and like she would feature other creators that were in this mom talk group, also part of the swinging group. 
about them being her daughters. And it was just a really like exaggerated, ridiculous thing. And so they were offered a show, I guess, um, called The Secret of Lives of Mormon Wives. <laughs> and she took the deal. Now, not the whole group of swingers, soft swingers, sorry, soft swingers are not in it, but. Let's call them what they are. Sinners. <laughs> so I'll read the synopsis. Jezebel. The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. The scandalous group of. Hold on. The scandalous world of a group of Mormon mom influencers implodes when they get caught in the midst of a swinging sex scandal that makes international headlines. Now their sisterhood is shook to its core. Faith, friendship, and reputations are all on the line. Will mom talk be able to survive and continue the rule book? Wait. I'm dyslexic, sorry. (laughs) Will mom talk be able to survive and continue to give the rule book a run for its money? Or would this group fall from grace? Mm. Is soaking on the table. <laughs> I feel like they're past that. Is, that that's, so, that's penetration. The main character, but, yes. But according to the Mormons, it's not. It oh, doesn't no, it count still very sex. much is. It's just their loophole. Anyways, so. Loophole. The main the main character, she got divorced, and then she she gets a boyfriend, and that's <gasps> what the show is about. And then she has another baby, a boyfriend, and they're not married. I'm a, I mean, I I I would watch Sinners. an episode if it was on. I feel like I I feel like dirty trying to go to it. Like, listen, no, I'm, I'm going, going to, to make it. you watch this. <laughs> I'm going to see it because it will be on my TV. Like because some well. of the stuff that they talk about is like they're thinking it's the most scandalous thing in the world, and we're like, oh no, that's just like normal. <laughs> it definitely feels that way coming out of people room. are so, dying. Kim. It was just I I've had a very few like busy weeks, and I I just needed something to watch that was like not productive, and so I watched it. Oh well, wow. and I recommend it if you need she, something. She recommends it. Nell approved. Yeah, that and I'm gonna watch much. more of it. I'm Nell approved. That that doesn't say much. <laughs> I told you, stop pretending to be a bad person. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, last one up, and I'll do this one quickly. Uh, it's kind of it's it's something. It's been out for a while, but uh, True Detective. Have you guys heard of it? Mm. Heard of? Never watched. Yeah, Justin, have you watched it? I. Wait. I feel yeah, like, I, I think feel I watched like you, uh, I feel like you would the be first the kind of season. Would be. Yeah, the first one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I just yeah. finished uh, with uh, Matthew McConaughey <sighs> and um, uh, Woody Harrelson. Um, it is an American anthology crime drama television series created by Nick uh, Pizzolatto. Uh, he it premiered on January 12th to 2014. Um, and it basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a true crime kind of show, but it's, it's, it's HBO style and it is, it's really good. Um, it follows these two detectives who meet up in Louisiana and they come across some really, um, horrible crimes. Uh, and I don't want to say too much about it, but if you're kind of not into dark shit, then don't get into it. But if you don't mind it, it's a really great story. Um, the writing is phenomenal. The cinematography is great. It's just really well made. Um, I haven't watched the other seasons yet. I've heard two and three are okay, but the fourth one's had like a really good comeback up from what I've heard. So, but yeah, I was really impressed. If you like like things like Chernobyl or um, some other HBO shows, uh, Last of Us. Like is, is probably not the right word. You're looking for, you're interested in. Sure. Like if you appreciate like. Chernobyl, the show, the show. Oh, the show Chernobyl. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I should have clarified. If you like the nuclear <laughs> accident that destroyed lives. She's like, here we go. We're, they're starting. I, I must have dozed off. Sorry. I was talking about HBO shows. <laughs> How does it compare to Mindhunter? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I would say it's um, it's just as well made, but the crimes that they start following once you get past like the second episode are darker. Okay. Uh, if you it's, have kids, it's pretty rough yeah it's it. so dark yeah like like it was it was a lot for me 
yeah, it, it's, that it's means pretty rough. I will probably listen. And... Are you going to listen to it? Listen, watch. You know oh. what I mean. Okay. She likes to put on shows and then walk away and listen to them rather than watch them. I mean, fair enough. But yeah, True Detective. True Detective. All right, guys. Uh, well, moving along, I decided to bring one of our segments back that we started last week. Now that we got some uh, experience under our belt with it, and uh, I found a... Uh, what are you looking at that way for? I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now you know. <laughs> How, he always says, rank this on a scale of 1 to 10. And I'm like, That's no. That's not the same thing. <laughs> I refuse. It's exactly the same. Oh, it's Ask not me the same a different thing, question. Because I'm not asking you to compare a That's bunch of different dumb things and, and I make hate one it. better or worse than the other without knowing what's coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, no, hey, you're on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you like this thing? Yeah, you'll be fine. That's easy. That Yeah, that's a seven. No, you say, like, wh- when I hear on a scale of 1 to 10, how much pain are you in? I don't. <laughs> I don't ask you that. That's a doctor question. <laughs> yeah, I don't answer it. Well, uh, in case you couldn't tell, we're playing blind rankings all over again. And this time, since we're talking, we have an episode about food. I thought I'd find one that was something related, and Janelle decided, uh, and I decided to do restaurants. So we're doing blind ranking restaurants, and I had this brand new tool, so it'll be faster, more efficient. As long as Chris doesn't go on too long with his rants, we'll be just fine. Well. <laughs> all right, y'all ready to play? Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. you, you will need your own ranking, so please get your own uh, devices out and have your I'll own rankings. You, you can't change. You have to put it in your own I'll order. Do whatever I damn well please. Uh, please, your own rankings. Um, so uh, are, we, are we ready? Got it. Hold on, hold on, hold Uh-oh. on. I'm kind of make a new note. Is it 1 through 10? It is 1 through 10. Perfect. It is 1 through 10. Um, <laughs> I, uh, these are restaurants, and from what I can tell from the first one, it's going to be like you know, chain restaurants kind of thing. So I don't think you're going to see anything that's going to be crazy Perfect. out there. I think we've probably all been to them. Uh, first one up, while everyone's getting their notes ready, is Red Robin. Red Robin. Uh, and it's no secret, so you can tell me whenever you want. Um, I'm, I've am i only been here like once or twice, and nothing special has ever stood out to me. So I'm going to go with a solid eight. Ten. Oh, wow. Right off the Ten bat. is worse, right? Yes. Uh, uh, ten is worse. Ten. Okay, so no I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with eight, mm-hmm. Red Robin. Okay, so two eights. I've only been like twice, and what? neither one of those memories were Ten. great. Uh, Justin, you're you're up. But I do like a good burger. What are you ranking it? Um, sorry, I. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get distracted, buddy? I feel old. I'm like trying to make a new note in the notes app and I'm like, where's the button? Where's the button to make a new note? I've never felt more old man don't know how technology works than right now. Buddy. I got it. But, but. It took a minute. Too many. Too many minutes. (laughs) We believe in you. It was seconds. No, it like, it was the moment Chris started. I, not Chris, (laughs) God. The white man. The moment the white man started talking. <laughs> Happened to you a lot. <sighs> so what you yeah. ranking? Um, Red Robin. We're going to put Red Robin at um, a six. A six. All right. Well, that brings our average right to my number, and that is number eight. So Red Robin, number eight. All right. Next one up is going to be Cracker Barrel. Ooh. Okay. Five. Are we talking about strictly the food? Well, I don't know. I guess the experience, too. Like, the whole, like, the vibes and everything. So, not just, like, the taste of the food. I would say the whole experience. You want to combine all those things. How come when she asks a question, she gets a gentle answer? And when I get a question, it's, fuck you, pick a number. Because it's actually, like, not stupid. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) All right. She's asking genuine questions. She is. And (laughs) taking the information and using it. You're just an agent of chaos. (laughs) You do this to yourself. Uh, I'm going to put it at a four. Oh, a four for now. Mm. Okay. I like breakfast. And I like that I can go there and get greens with my breakfast. I really like that. Yeah. Um, I'm going with a solid five. I said three. Okay, so three. I almost. Uh, Justin, you're your last one here, bub. Oh, I said five. Oh, you said five. I'm sorry, I missed it. 
All right, That's so okay. that brings the average to a 4.25, so we're rounding down. Is that how we decided we're going to do that for last time? Okay. I don't know. Okay. I think so. Okay. Uh, well, we round according to math. If it's 4.4 or lower, you round down, right? I yeah. We'll figure it out. It doesn't matter. All right, uh, next one up, Olive Garden. <sighs> this is my dad's number one. Is it really? It's not anymore. He's tired. Oh, is it? Yeah. All right. Never mind. Right. Um, I'm going to put that at an eight. An eight? Wow. Uh, I'm putting in a solid seven. I seven. am also at seven. Yeah. All right. Wow. Even though I fuck with their salad. <laughs> I do. I love that answer. <laughs> All right. It's just, it's, they don't salt their pasta, man. No, they don't. <laughs> And eating there is awkward. It is kind of weird. It's awkward. Like, we all are aware like, this is fake Italian, and what but... what happened to the Andes mints? I feel like oh. every time we're there, we run into people that we know but have not seen in a while and don't really care to. Yeah. I sure. don't think it's less... Not, not that we don't like th- them. We're just not seeking them yeah. out. Mm. Yeah. I see, I see. Yes. All right, next one up here, uh, Chili's. All right. I think I see the vibe of these restaurants that are going to be on this list. They're not like fast food, but they're not yeah, like, yeah, great. Yeah. It's chain, rest- chain restaurants, so they're not fast I'm food. I'm going to put Chili's at a six. I No, you go first. I'm going to feel like I'm going to be ashamed of my answer. My answer is three. <gasps> really? Okay. Yeah. Um, overall, it's really easy to get something indulgent there, but also if you are a person that has to eat gluten-free, it's really easy to eat there. If Mm. you prefer to eat like on the healthier side, it's easy to eat there and you get chips and salsa. Well, like, yeah, it's a solid, I mean, I don't really eat chilies to be honest. I don't go out to eat very often, but I think as a restaurant, it's, it's solid. Their quesadillas, man. What wins me over? I can't eat those. Uh, four for me. Justin? Seven. I'm going to put it below <laughs> Red Robin. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, that brings it to a five. Okay, so uh, moving along, our next one is Cheesecake Factory. Oh, ten. Hard ten. Oh, wow. Coming out. Yeah. Uh, but there's so much on the menu. <laughs> Bro, I went there uh, after a show, like, with work, and it's a binder, man. It ain't a menu. Yeah. <laughs> like, I my agree. coworkers, I'm like, my coworkers like, oh, I'm going to get this. And I'm like, where's that? He's like, oh, page 14. I'm like, <laughs> what much. menu has 14 pages? It has more than 14 pages. It's like 20-something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that was the last page. I just said that's where the thing you wanted was on. Also, how often is your coworker going that he has the... The 21 page menu memorized. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't have it memorized, but he had what he wanted memorized. What, like it's hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a predicament because I have four, five, seven, and eight. So I feel like it goes in the middle, but if I put it in the middle, then I'm not going to have anything decent. So I'm going to go with. I put it at nine. I'm going to put it at nine, too, actually. I put it at nine. Oh, I, I, okay. We, we might get into this, but <laughs> as someone who worked in the corporate side of product development, I don't understand what the hell they're doing to their food. There was a scene. I just don't understand how they're making it. So that it's affordable Uh, or as affordable as it is. No, not affordability. I mean, like genuinely so unhealthy and like, I, I believe in indulging and like enjoying things, but I just their regular food. Like why is a steak and broccoli like, 2000 I don't understand that. Yeah. There's a scene doing. in New Girl that reminds me of Cheesecake Factory where Schmidt sits down at a table and orders something off the menu. He's like, Yeah, I'll have the California roll and the spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> and uh, clam chowder, New England clam chowder. <laughs> what is this place? What is this place? <laughs> Literally, Cheesecake Factory. You're doing yeah. too much with the menu. <laughs> yeah. It just makes no sense. All right. Uh, next up, speaking of clam chowder, uh, Red Lobster. I don't think I've ever been here, actually, so I'm going to have to, like, just put this at 10 just because I 
don't know where else to put it. Yeah, I gotta put it nine. I there. I don't like seafood, so this should actually be a ten for me. Oh. Um. However, their biscuits are okay. Uh, you need a lot of water. Woof set biscuits, but you know. I'm gonna put Red Lobster at four because I have great memories there. But the one in Florida, I don't think I've ever been to the one here. Yeah, I'm too with the exception to to of to pick up my drunk boss once. <laughs> okay. Current boss? <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was a former boss uh, when I worked for a solar company uh, not related to Vivint. I just got a call one day from my boss's phone, but it was a waiter there, and they're like, look, this is the last number he called. He's drunk. <laughs> Are you able to pick him up? He won't tell us who he is or anybody else that can. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> he happened to live on my street, so I just like picked him up, took him home. Nice. That's fair. What's yours now? Six. Six. Um, again, just as a restaurant, I think you their menu is pretty solid. You can get a variety of types of seafood. And I do have some pretty solid memories. Well. Also, them cheddar biscuits. Yeah, actually, so Aldi sells uh, the cheddar biscuit mix, gluten free, mm. and I enjoy those. There you go. People right. sleep on Aldi. They they do. <laughs> I <laughs> love Aldi so much. All right, uh, next one up on our list. Uh, we are getting down to the final bits here. We only have four more. Uh, Applebee's. And I wish I could have saved ten for this one. Yeah, same. Well. Um, but alas, I don't mind Applebee's, honestly. Well, I'm so but this is why you. I get super worried because I've got one, two, five, and ten. <laughs> That's a great range, though. Wait, but if I put is... Applebee's at two, no, and then we have two great restaurants, I got to put it five and ten. Or like, it's Applebee's above or below Chili's for you? For me, it's above Chili's, but barely. Oh my god! So I'm gonna okay. put it at five. I feel like I have a little more insight because I know how the restaurants run. <laughs> and that's why my ranking is the way it is. So Applebee's for me is eight. Eight. Um, okay. that's honestly, fair. no, that's appropriate because Cheesecake Factory, the way they, I don't know how they get their nutrition information or why it is the way that, that it is. She's but it scares me. <laughs> no, seriously, it scares me. What are you doing to the food? Nobody knows. Justin, what do you say? I'm going to put it at four only because my next lowest is nine. I got that. And I feel like I need to save that for something terrible that you're going to throw at me. Something right. truly awful. Well, I did move some things around here. Uh, okay. And all right. So I guess I'll wait till the end till I share everything. All right. Next one up is Golden Corral. Again, I really wish I would have went higher earlier. See? No shame. That's my number nine. See, anyway, you need to save it for something. <laughs> All right, so nine for Justin. It's three for me. Five. Five for now. Two for me. And two that's all for I have my top two are all that's left. I would have put Cracker Barrel above Golden Corral, and now I have to put Golden Corral at two. Do you see why I hate this? No. I, I feel you because Cracker Barrel will be above Applebee's. Five. I hate this so much. Now all I have left is one in ten. It's just a board game. It's not. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> all you have left is one in ten? Yes. I've I'm... apparently missed a restaurant at some point. I have one and two left. Yeah, so. me too. I have one, two, and three. Wait, uh, yeah. How did you do that, buddy? Hold on. I we may have, have accidentally overwrote Hold. one just at some point. See if you missed anything. Chilies, Cracker Barrel, Golden Corral, Red Lobster. Olive Garden. Mm, Red Lobster. Yeah. That's the one I missed. There we go. Red Lobster was supposed to be my number nine, I remember. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess Golden Corral is three. Damn it. Oh, God. What did that just do See? the average? That, oh, no. That jumped it oh, no. so far up. <laughs> Let me put that back down. <laughs> so <Shoot>. far up. <laughs> oh, no. That's why this game is stupid. It went from nine <laughs> to three. It's not that deep. <laughs> it is that deep. All right. Uh God. Next one up, Denny's. Tim, I hate this and I hate you. <laughs> well, it's two. It's two. 
Well, Denny's two. Because what is it going to be? Is it going to be number one? Is it going to be number two? I'm putting Denny's at two. Okay. Denny's is ten. Wait. And okay, so Justin, you said two as well. To put Denny's at one. Okay, so there's three twos here and a ten. <laughs> I only have one left, so. The only one I have left is number one, and I hate this <laughs> so much. Hold on, I got to move everything down now. <laughs> Whoever invented this game deserves to be punched <laughs> in the neck. <laughs> there's only one way you can redeem this. He's super fun to play board games with, <laughs> in you're wondering. Uh, okay, all right, last one up, guys. It is Texas Roadhouse. No, that's why <laughs> Number one. Number one. No, that's fine. I'm okay I was hoping it. you were going to say Waffle House. Yeah, I fuck with that, too. Because that could have been number one, and I would have been fine with it. But then you got to throw a Texas Roadhouse, which is no, number one. Number one. <laughs> number one? Mm-hmm. No, no. It's, it's. all right, I'm going to tell you all the story. Over, when all, I worked... Hold on. Hold on. Over all the restaurants that were named? Yes. I probably should have sure. put Cracker Barrel at number one. Roadhouse would have been solid, too. Roadhouse well, would have okay been, like, a worked. five for me. I'm, Here's the thing, though. I've experienced Texas Roadhouse outside of Texas. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, when, when people find out that you're from Texas, they they're always like, want to take oh, you let me to, take you know you to Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, remembering that memory, I want to put it much further down on the list. Now. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Because when but, I lived in Florida, they took me to Texas Roadhouse <laughs> because I was homesick. And I got, look, listen. Upset. Yeah, the I got all gussied up. I got all gussied up. I put on my good flannel. My good jeans, <laughs> my boots, Your and I perfume. even put on my hat, my white cowboy hat. I put everything on. I was ready to go. We got there. I took a bite of the food that I ordered, and then I sat there for the rest of the night it's in disappointment. So when you go out of state and you get a margarita at Texas Roadhouse, it is grass green. It's bright green. It's disturbing. Is it not supposed to be bright green? No. <laughs> Been in Wisconsin for too long. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm from Chicago, so, you know. Yeah, well. All right, so um, are you ready for the order? Yeah, sure. All right, number 10, cheesecake. Uh, number it 9, Red Robin. Number 8, Olive Garden. Uh, number 7, Red Lobster. Number 6, Applebee's. Five chilies, number four golden corral, number three Denny's, number two Cracker Barrel, and then number one Texas Roadhouse. I'm okay yeah, with that. Right that's there. fine. <laughs> Honestly, I was looking at it because I do. Um, I know how a lot of the restaurants are run and how many of them are actually making their food. Texas Roadhouse makes their stuff in house. It's good to know. So, when I was in North Carolina. I used to, I sell LED walls and the guy who owned the company, we'd always go to Texas Roadhouse every, every time at any state. And I'm like, there's so many great options. He wants to go to Texas Roadhouse. Anywhere else. This, this man got the nastiest looking steak I had ever seen in my life. It was so bad that it made my food unappealing by proximity. What was bad about it? Visually, it looked. Was it rare? No, nah, it was it was the grayness of the of the steak okay. that was oh. that was why was it gray? <laughs> what kind of have steak you ever seen like meat turn long? gray, like when it's cooked poorly? Or too long. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the steak, and it wasn't it wasn't well done. So it was like medium rare or rare, huh. but it was it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It looked gross. Aged it looked unappealing. Long, probably it wasn't seared. It no, nah, it was it wasn't good. It was. Uh, it was during in, dinner. Okay. It was, uh, oh. But it was in North Carolina. Not good. So, <laughs> Not good. Yeah, it was bad. And I've never gone ever since. All right, guys. Well, great, great edition of Blind Rankings. We'll save this one for another time since Chris loves it so much. Tim, and I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to talk about some food and mythical things alongside it. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we uh, we got some stuff to talk about, including Janelle's profession, and that is some food. And Janelle, I asked her what should we talk about with food because there's so many 
things to discuss. Uh, she uh, came up with talking about food in a fictional setting. And so today we're talking about uh, food of mythical lands. That's the, that's, the, that's the title you came up with. Yes. So, Janelle, before we get into that, I have some questions for you, if you feel so obliged to answer them. Ask away. Uh, you are a chef uh, with a professional background. Can you tell us a little bit about your culinary journey? Well, um, I've always cooked my whole life. Um, I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. I went to culinary school at a young age and, yeah, just always loved kitchen life, the work. (laughs) That's what I always wanted to do. I can't, I can't remember really wanting to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. In your studying and in your journey, like just practicing and becoming better, do you, are there any challenges or any kind of like particular things that you felt like is like, hey, this is definitely challenging. This is hard, but this is good. This is like what I wanted to do kind of thing. Um, the only real challenge for me, because food is, is such a passion of mine, was um, it is a male dominated field. And because it's a trade you encounter people men of all sorts and those men maybe they really want to see you or maybe they really don't and you get the worst sides of them Mm. and that's the hardest part of it all um and you see that whether you're in corporate or whether you're working for a local catering company it doesn't matter um, you see the worst sides of men. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all of you <laughs> with good reason. All right. So do you remember the first dish that you created in a professional setting? Uh, I do remember the first menu that I wrote by myself in a fine dining setting. And it was around this time of year. So I love um, all autumnal things. And, uh, yeah, so I remember the menu for sure. I was 18, uh, working at a fine dining restaurant in Salado and I became the sous chef there (laughs) at my first kitchen job. So that was interesting. Any of the dishes stand out to you? Yes. So I did, um, goat cheese stuffed squash blossoms, which honestly is late in the year for squash blossoms now that I think about it. Um, a lot of butternut squash, brown butter, fried sage, really classic um, things. Duck breast, of course. Um, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like really classic. I've, I'm really, I really love classic French food. I love, um, I, I mean, I learned French so that I could be really good at this. You know, learn all of the terms. Um, so I, I loved all the techniques. I loved learning how to do them correctly. Um, but yeah, it was all about, um, squashes, goat cheese, thyme, brown butter, that kind of thing. Nice. It was really the special. one thing I learned, and I will never forget this, <laughs> is that you <laughs> start duck. duck in a cold pan. To render the fat, just like bacon. And heat it up over mm-hmm. time. Yeah. You don't put duck in a hot pan. Mm. Well, to, yeah, because, so duck breast, actually... I've made duck sausage as well. You can make sausage from the entire animal. I mean, of anything. But, yeah, there's such a heavy cap of fat surrounding the entire bird that you don't want to put it in a hot pan because then the skin might get crispy, but then there's a thick layer of, like, blubber underneath. So you want to render that out. So it's Truly crispy. and gross. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Um, how would you describe your cooking style? Maybe to someone who like like us, like you is kind of we're not in the field, but my jam now. Mm-hmm. Um or like a prefer like a philosophy or like preference of, you know, people philosophy. that you like to follow. Okay. I really like I try to stick to whole foods. Um, I go for a holistic approach as much as I can. Um and I have to eat gluten free. So I think everybody can benefit from that, but not everybody wants to. Um, I try to go for a holistic approach as much as I can, and I like to cook seasonally. And I also incorporate uh, 
um, flavors from around the world because that's also really, really important. Um, and Korean food is nice. And I pull from a lot of that. Like, I was raised on Korean food. Yeah. Really, really important in my my journey. Very cool. All right. Um, do you have a favorite ingredient to work with? A f- or maybe several. I would have to categorize that. <laughs> I I would say that if I if I could name anything that's underrated for the majority of people, it's fish sauce. Oh. Um, fish sauce for sure. Because like white people especially love to talk about Worcestershire sauce. European and Americans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> European Americans. They love to talk about Worcestershire sauce, but and th- and they use it generously in their marinades for steak or whatever, like McCormick seasoning and all that. But fish sauce, it's a pure form fermented ingredient. It's it's literally anchovies and salt, mm. and they're so afraid of it. Um, there's a lot of xenophobia involved there, of course. But yeah, fish sauce I think is an <coughs> underrated ingredient, and it's probably one of my favorites. Cool for sure. Justin, you're right over there. I was, <laughs> <laughs> and then she said anchovies and salt. And okay, like, okay, no, it's <laughs> it's. Li- Listen, I have hated anchovies my entire life, and I love when she makes food so with fish sauce. So it it amplifies the savory flavor that you love in in steak in um anything. Pretty much. Do you like kimchi? Mm. I (laughs) here's the thing. I haven't had I haven't had properly made kimchi. I should say. Well, you lived in Colleen. That is criminal. You said what? You lived in Colleen. That is criminal. I I actually never lived in Colleen. I lived in Temple. Okay, well, that makes sense. Too far to journey for good kimchi. Interestingly enough, I tried to explain to my boss um, when I worked in Temple and lived in Temple how moving to Temple was such a culture shock for me because I always grew up. I I grew up in Colleen. I we moved here when I was eight. So, and also my dad was stationed in Korea for years, and so it it was just very normal to live in a super diverse area and access. We had so much access to different people and foods and learning about culture that moving to temple it was it was a huge culture shock and she like was surprised that i said that but i was like no like so white yeah have you heard the term white flight oh yes where from exactly where i grew up when there's a diverse community white people tend to get scared and they want to live in a community that is more like themselves. Mm. So they'll move somewhere and they'll make that the nicer, bougie, white people only area. I haven't heard of the term, but I mean, it's common. As people of color move to those areas, they'll go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It started, and you can really see it in like Colleen. That's what happened at Diversified. They moved to Cove. Cove started to diversify. They moved to Kempner. But the th- Same thing with Temple. They moved to Temple yeah. and Belton and that area. Morgan's Point. And now it's starting to diversify, so they're moving to Morgan's Point. <laughs> they're moving a little more north to get away from it. And Temple's just building more houses further west. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And that's where the white people are moving. Uh-huh. Well, and further west is Morgan's Point. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it was a really big culture shock. I mean, we we moved to Temple when we got married, and that was ten years ago. And I, I was like, "What is this? There's no good food here. There's, it's very segregated. Like this is strange to me." Um, and like maybe it, it, she was saying, "Well, I mean, like we have a diverse population here," and I was like, "No, <laughs> no, ma'am, no." Well, what's interesting that Temple does. <laughs> have a diverse population. It is just yes. way more segregated. segregated. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. You, you know where the people of color live. Well, and they were Temple. one of the last school districts to um, desegregate schools. I, in the I US. Would believe that. It was interesting because the apartment complex I lived in, 
was very diverse. Oh, what if we But like, everything we else in the area was not. Which apartment complex? Uh, what was it? Pecan Point? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we lived, lived in the there. same complex, just not at the same time. We lived oh. there, yeah, for a year. It was my favorite apartment. Yeah, that I spent a lot of time in that pool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I tried not to, but I did. It was hot. Yeah, you yeah. kind of had to. I would go for a night swim. Anyways. Boogie boarding. Boogie boarding. Boogie boarding. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, so, oh, okay. What is the strangest or most unusual dish you've ever prepared? I've been thinking about this for a minute. Um, you get strange requests um, that create wrinkles in your forehead, especially if you're a small forehead baddie like I am. <laughs> um, but for, like, the interest of people, um, I think the, sh- the most outlandish was I made a rabbit terrine. Um, do you guys know what a terrine is? No, I do not. So a terrine, <laughs> basically a terrine is a uh, meat stuffed pastry. Hmm. I made one out of rabbit, which is something that's more rare these days because rabbit, we don't really hunt for rabbit, right? So, and also you need a lot more fat. So to make a terrine, Because it's basically like a sausage-encrusted pastry. So you need to find a different source of fat. And that flavor of fat impacts the flavor of the rabbit and et cetera. It's complicated, right? And then not only do you have to think about that, you have to match the fat to, you have to make um, a super concentrated bone broth so that when you're terrine, so your sausage-encrusted pastry is cooled, you have to inject it with a specific bone broth concentrate that you can flavor however you want to. So it fills the, the, the gap between the meat and the pastry. Because when you bake a pastry like that, the meat shrinks and the pastry gets larger. So you have to fill the space. Wow. Also. <laughs> it's, com- it's really complicated. Like, it's, it's a lot. Also, and so if I made- you see a cooked rabbit, the only way to tell the difference between that and a cat is the shoulders. Yes. What? Actually, if you get... I, I don't if you, like that. So if you get, uh, like, raw rabbit, you need to check their shoulder blades because sometimes purveyors will trick you into believing it's a rabbit when it's a cat because they taste really similar, apparently, and they look really similar when they're skinned. And so, like, if you see They're a eating shoulder- the cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so, like... That's where I was going. Thank you, Justin. The, the sh- I knew you were going there, but so but this is important. It is important. So like if a if a cat if, so if the body has a shoulder blade like ours, because cats can fold themselves into things. So if you see a shoulder blade like ours, it's a cat. But if you see the ball and socket, then it's a it's a rabbit. Good to know. Anyway, so I made this terrain. I made a purely rabbit terrain. I decided on pork fat because it's superior. And um, I did this rabbit tenderloin that I cooked to medium rare. And then I made a rabbit sausage with like fresh herbs and everything. And then a red wine um, bone broth concentrate. I believe I used, there's a difference. So when you look at, this is going to be a long podcast. So when you're talking (laughs) about, about bone broth, you're looking, It's either like a roasted bone broth or a white bone broth. The difference is you roast the bones first. And the white, I used a white bone broth and tinted it with red wine and rosemary. I want you to know she can do this with literally any meal she's ever made. (laughs) This was in culinary school. Yeah, this was, it was a really complicated dish. But then I, not just that I made the terrine, but I also created a bunch of fancy garnishes and like, I made these fried potato wheels that you're supposed to stack, but I put it upside down and, or I put it like standing up and put the terrain there. And it was, yeah, Mm. I did white beans and like white balsamic lace carrots. So I am a sick individual and I called the dish 
Peter Rabbit. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. I mean, I'm in. <laughs> I have a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> I think you have to re. I think you have to remake it. But it was a l- <laughs> it was a lot of work, and it was so fun. Um, now, Strange Request. That's another story I couldn't even fucking tell you because people are like salmon, no pink, please, or <laughs> I want a warm pink center in my steak. Don't we all? Like, I get it, <laughs> fine, but what does that mean? Or this is not medium rare. I make medium rare at my house all the time. <laughs> like, okay. It's like well, you don't know what you're doing. One of us has a degree, yeah. and the other one <laughs> yeah. doesn't know what the yeah. hell they're talking about. Or they want to come into the kitchen and show you how they make their steaks and that, how they want them. Yeah. Please don't. You're like, yeah, <laughs> no, actually, go Please sit down. do not. I never want to see you again. <laughs> Please leave. Honestly, like, with the chef you had, please do. Go back there. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's see who walks out of that kitchen. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, last question then for you now, then we'll get to, to your questions. Um, what's your guilty pleasure food? Uh, I know you know this. I have a few. So I love um, Taco Bell style yes. stuff. I love Let's nacho go. cheese. I love nacho <laughs> cheese. But I have to be really careful because I have to eat gluten-free and not all nacho cheese is gluten. Mm. So it's... Com- we found I out love- recently. I've been gluing myself Taco from Bell Taco Bell. Nacho cheese is yeah. not gluten free. So I I love nacho cheese. I like good food too. Um, but yeah, nacho cheese. I love Wendy's as well. I would just consider and Wendy's I love, a, a guilty pleasure. Yes, it is. That's just and a I pleasure. love uh, In and Out lettuce wrap burgers. I like them better than Wendy's lettuce burgers because you can actually eat them like. In and out is only a guilty pleasure because we live in Texas. Yeah, I think guilty yeah. pleasure wise, it's it's Taco Bell. I like Taco Bell style f- stuff, but I usually end up making it at home because I don't want to get sick. Yeah, fair enough. Isn't that yours? Oh yeah, Taco Bell sure. is your. That's why I made it for your birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. All right. Well, thank you, Nell. Appreciate that. Um, but now it's time for you to like to question us now. Okay. We're talking about fictional foods and fictional worlds. And I don't know where we're going here. This is all her. So. I have not read the notes. I do not know what question she's going to I ask. Don't, yeah, but same. I promise you I've had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah, we talk about it a lot. Okay. So we're all nerds. Right. What? Yes fictional world do you think has the best cuisine like when you watch it you're like no i would love to to just like be there and be like Mm. like out of all of the fictional worlds yeah pick pick your favorite that's hard that's right i would say um (laughs) from the anime uh so i was reincarnated as a slime because the character Yeah, yeah. Goes out of its way that. specifically to remake a lot of a lot of foods, and there's like people in that world who are from Earth who weren't reincarnated. Like, there's a whole bit about one of the characters who's like, because when they transfer to the world, they stop aging. So she's like, I haven't had like real like food in like however many years, like a hundred years. <laughs> and she's like, and then he introduces ramen. them to like ramen and sushi. <laughs> They're like, oh, we we thought you always had to cook a fish. And he's like, nah, try this. Let's try it with some wasabi. This is going to be good. And people's minds are like blown. <laughs> but they're not like real world fish. So like, like, well, this is closest to tuna. This one's closest to salmon. Mm. And they're like, well, we've never had this. We live in a landlocked country. Like you can't get fish from the ocean to here. So we always thought fish was gross because we just eat lake fish. Yeah. He's like, well, let me introduce you guys to refrigeration. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, my go-to for this is, it's probably the most predictable one, and that's Lord of the Rings. Um, Because I just, like... In the movies, though, are you talking about the books? I mean, both, but, like, I don't know why this scene stands out to me so much, but in The Hobbit, and... uh, The dwarves are at... uh, Let him finish. No, well, yes and no, but when it's... um, Who's the first uh, dwarf in... um, 
I can't remember his name, but the Ballin. The, no, it's the bigger bald head. That's not Ballin, is it? He's bald. It's either Ballin or Dwalin, and I can't remember which yeah. one. Yeah, but he was the first one there, and like Bilbo was giving him food and everything, and he had a fish, and he ate the fish head, and I don't know why that looks appealing to me. It's weird. I know it does, but like that. It's course, not weird. But of course, the whole following scene is awesome too. But like for whatever reason, that scene always sticks out in my head. Uh, and yeah, so like Lord of the Rings is, is a simple one because you got llama bread, of course, and you got you know with the. Okay, I have beef with the way that llama bread is is publicized. One. Sorry. <laughs> oh no! This it's gonna be a rant. Be okay, <laughs> it's gonna be a rant. So you finish. Well, I mean, I don't have much else to say other than I think Lord of the Rings would probably because I'm most familiar with it. Yeah. Like Star Wars seems fun, but like I don't know much about the food because they don't really right. t- show anything. Okay, Ray's rations. They actually yes. look really good. One quarter portion. Which was like definitely <laughs> some sort of oat bread, but it looked it looked good. It looked interesting, yeah. Yeah. All right, hear me out. Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. I'll show you some of those <laughs> meals that you can cook, but literally you take five items, up to five items, throw them in a, a pot is what it's called. It takes 10 seconds, and then you get, like, the most delicious-looking food, like stewed veggies with a side of fish. And, like, each meal you make has different properties. So, like, some of them just restore health. Some of them give you cold resistance. Some of them give you extra magic. You can get different kinds of fish and different kinds of meat, mix them in different ways. You guys are giving real Jesus kid vibes right now because both of you have given fish as your answer. <laughs> so it's like, five loves I and like fish. fish My and family is from an island. I know. I like, but like fish. Did, did like the Jesus story not like, you're thinking like, oh yeah, loaves of bread and some fish. No. <laughs> I did say loaves of bread. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Tim that, said bread and, and fish. And you said a head of fish, so I'm like... Yeah. Tim said I'm, bread and fish. No, that definitely, that, like, listening to the story about fish and bread, I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, in Zelda, you can also get seared steak and baked apples. Good for you. You said fish. You can also make a cake in that pot. You can. <laughs> and it literally takes 10 seconds. In a pot of water, just just make a cake. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Um, I think Star Wars would probably have the best food. I mean, because you have so speaking. many worlds and so many cultures. You go to a planet like Coruscant, where you've got, like, so much. Dude, there's got to be bomb. I have pushback on that. So, right. in Star Wars, um, anything pleasurable is deemed, like, not moral. So, like, I feel like the food wouldn't be that great. Mm. I feel like if mm. you were to get like good, like if you if you were to go to like not Coros, I feel like it like you feel, it's like you're going to the city in Coros. Well, obviously, sure. but, but yeah. like plan it's a city. But if you go to the like, undercity, the lower parts, like <laughs> yeah, like where you see Ahsoka, like after she leaves the Jedi Temple. Just, or, like, or, or I was gonna say like go to Naboo or something. Like I'm sure they got like better sure. foods or something. And, and like, Naboo looks bland as hell, man. Naboo is bland. Yeah, but I think that the culture in Star Wars, like being like this. The the morality, like the stoicism, like I feel like anything pleasurable is deemed as bad. I understand in Star Wars. All right, Hear me I out. think I think that part of that too is just like because like a lot of the the main media focuses is on this like one very like narrow yeah portion, and I think that I just probably have a much more expanded view of that world than your average person. Well, because I mean. I've- Watch the movies. It's just the yeah. like the characterization of a lot of that is I uh, that's the vibe that I, I get. I think it's because we focus on the Jedi. Justin's right. Yeah, like, for sure. We, we really only see one religious sect. You're not lo- well. No, but I'm thinking about like Ray. You know, like not just yeah, but she was a Jedi. The second she got off her planet, <laughs> which, which <laughs> was a know desert. That like all her whole life. I guess I mean she was poor, so it's it's just hard to say. Like I. It's very, the culture is, like, anything, like, good is immoral. Yeah. I just think about in episode one, which I hate to reference episode one, but uh, going to. when they're, like, on Tatooine and they're walking 
and they see like these st- all these like stalls and stands oh, yeah. that have like food. Oh, um, okay. So it's like a lot of the places that aren't like your your nice places. It's like when you go to like if you go to downtown Chicago, you're gonna see like all your chains, all your major, your fancy restaurants. But if you go out of downtown Chicago, but still in the city, that's where your actual really good food is. Right. I got you. Um, yeah, for sure. Hear me out, though. I know none of us are like huge fans of this series, this world, universe, whatever you want to call it. Star Trek. Mm. One, it's all of Earth's food, but centuries ahead of the future. The food scene. Two, they have all of the other alien cultures' foods to try. Centuries ahead. Three, they have replicators. So they can literally make that food at any given point, any given place, with zero ingredients necessary. I feel like it's like Does that mean that all of it's healthy? It can be. Mm. I can eat whatever I want and theoretically, still be yes. Theoretically, See, yes. that would be life changing. So Lord of the Rings. What was the anime that you said? I was reincarnated as a slime. Yes. Okay. And yours was Zelda. Okay. This is probably kind of niche, but did y'all read the Boxcar Children series? Yes, no. I did. Uh, I, I did not. I'm aware of it. I didn't really read it. liked like listening to what they acquired and would eat. Such as? And, well, okay. They, and this is, Again, probably surprising because this is not stuff I would eat. They talked about like getting loaves of bread and like dipping it in blueberries with milk. And that is not something I would eat. But like I was just really intrigued by that. And then also um, Chronicles of Narnia. Mm. Really liked the description. In the books. In the for Turkish. Okay. In the books. (laughs) I like the description of. That had to yeah. be like the best, and then Turkish probably delight. the Hobbit series, like anything Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings, I really like that. Can I tell you how mad I was at Edmund when I tried Turkish Delight the first okay, time? Okay, that was my next question. <laughs> that was my next question. Hold off, Chris. Jeez, sorry, Chill I, out. I'm mad yeah. about it. Also, you like apples and cutlets. Yeah, but when I tasted Turkish Delight, I was like, there's no way Just I would betray version. my family. Just the plain version. Just the plain version. I'm not even super tight with my family. <laughs> like some that. of them. Some with some of them, I wouldn't betray those for some Turkish delight. If you could eat a meal in Middle Earth from any kingdom, which kingdom would you choose, Shire. and why? Hands down, Shire. One, it seems like the cleanest place to eat a meal. That's Two, the truth. They seem like they put a lot more effort into their food. They understand seasonings. Did you see Bilbo's pantry? Yeah, like, like they get it. The girlies who get it, get it. The hobbits who get it, get it. I don't Did know. you guys They're watch the, the only TikTok people who understand seasoning, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. It's like. But, I mean, what? the orcs put meat on the menu, so, I mean. Yeah, but what kind of meat are they serving? <laughs> Is it <laughs> hobbit? They're just like, here's a plate of meat. Eat it. I don't know. And, like, Minas Tirith looked like they had some pretty good tomatoes, but <laughs> I, I don't think I could eat tomatoes after watching that, so. Rivendell might be pretty good. I was going to say, Rivendell might be a great option. But their meat is like hunted meat. So it's like Gamey. whatever Gamey, whatever yeah. they find in the Yeah, they don't have like uh, and farmed veggies. animals. Domesticated, yeah. Except for yeah. chickens. Which I can, be, I can get on board with. I mean, I, it just really does depend on how well you know, seasoned and everything it is. But The only red meat they get is, is from hunted, hunted animals. Like deer. Yeah. I can get on board with that. I mean, I mean, Shire's got to be number one, but I'd go give Rivendell a close second. So we have to keep in mind that Rohan, they have cured meats mm-hmm. because they mm. have they have agriculture and they have domesticated animals and they also hunt. But because of the seasons, they probably cure a lot of their meat. Mm. So they probably do like hams and stuff during. Interesting. I did not think that the food episode was going to be our nerdiest episode yet, (laughs) but here we are. Oh, it can get so much worse. Actually, we could probably do another episode or three or four. This can get so much worse. Or have an 11th. Because we can talk about salt cured fish. 
This is my whole life. Oh no, I'm here for it. Yeah. But I just yes. wasn't expecting I'm not this to be like at all. Rohan, <laughs> their food. Like <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Or what is, what is the name of the, talk the about village Moria? on the lake? Do you want to talk about Moria? Moria. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. The village, the Lake Town. Oh, Lake, lake Town. Lake that's town. the Kingdom yeah. of Moria. It's in yeah the the dwarves like kingdom I said. yes, but like <laughs> specifically Lake Town. I thought you meant Lake like the mines Town of Moria. is in the kingdom. I, of I thought you meant Moria. the mines of Moria specifically. I'm talking about Lake Town specifically, not and it's two different towns, two different regions. Dale yeah. and Lake Town. Lake Town are the descendants of where? I understand Dale. what you're saying. <laughs> the kingdom. I agree of Moria with you. On the lake. Like I said, I thought you meant specifically the mines of Moria. The where no, the dwarves I said live. kingdom. I understand that now. But then that's also like saying, hey, this is America. You've got southern food. You've got east coast food. You've got west coast food. Like in that kingdom, there are different kinds of foods. So I'm saying specifically <laughs> Lake Town with their fish looks better than the food from the halls of Moria where they're eating dwarven food, which is like rabbits and things that they can find and hunt. All of that. Things they grow. Wheat, so bread. in Lake Town, you're probably talking more about salted barrel fish. Yes, which looks delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. I mentioned earlier how much I like fish. Can we just... Am I not allowed to like fish? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't like you guys. Um, on a related bed. note, are you guys watching Rings of Power? Yes. Okay, I, I want to. I started watching it, and I haven't got... I haven't like watched all of the episodes. I'm on. I'm on the second episode but of season two. I am. I'm the kind of fan that wants all of the slow details, so I need to. Yeah, you'll like this one. Yeah. Yeah, I I need a recap of season one because it's been years. They give I haven't one, started season yeah. two. I need to rewatch it. Just sure. I need like a. Have I need like an hour long recap though. <laughs> have you watched Free Run? No, however, it's, it's very Lord of the Rings. I have plans to. It's been highly recommended to me. Should I just finished it? It's it's it, really good. It's probably going to be a winter a winter thing for me when things uh, slow down, uh, and I'm not working as much. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Actually, so calling it wintering, like when the time change happens and it gets cold. I call it wintering now because of a friend of mine. It has changed my entire perspective. Like just being cozier, slowing down a little bit. Is it less Interesting. depressing? Yeah. It's a lot more I can't say you slow down around here because you gotta you gotta fight the snow sometimes. Right. Except for last year it didn't really snow much, but we don't talk about that. That's that just because the earth is dying. Well, yeah. We well, pretend that isn't happening. Damn. Well, we can do at this point. Okay. No, any more questions? Yes. <laughs> so, is there anything in the fictional worlds you read about or watched that you've tried in real life and it's been not worth the hype? Super disappointing. This is where you shine. Blue milk. Uh oh, okay. From Star Wars. Like I did make it with canned coke. It it was all right. She should have made it out and like that. It's no, no, no. Damn. I wasn't referring I he was to her. Say Turkish delight. <laughs> she she made pretty good blue milk. I made it with fresh stuff too. But I'm the first time I made it was canned. She tried so hard, Chris. I'm talking about the <laughs> stuff at Disney. I haven't had the newer stuff since they made like Star Wars Land, so I can't speak to that. But when they were doing the Star Wars hoopla, uh, hyperspace hoopla at Magic, uh, sorry, um, at, oh my God, I'm going blank. I'm so Hollywood sick Studios. right now. Hollywood Studios, thank you. That's my home. 
Um, Hollywood. Hollywood Studios did a hyperspace hoopla, and some of the cast members were able to enjoy, um, not seasonal, but like specific to that event, mm-hmm. meals and dishes and things. And they tried blue milk out there in 2011. It was not good. <laughs> it was chalky and gross, and it made me think of my grandfather's obsession with milk of magnesia. And I hate it. That's surprising. So because you just went. Oh, I thought I had already mentioned that. I didn't have to bring it up again. But let's talk about it. Turkish delight. <laughs> well, that, that that motherfucker <laughs> betrayed his siblings that he was close with the only remaining family he knew for a fact that he had because his parents his dad was off at war and his mom was helping the war effort so for all he knew they were dead he had three siblings and that lady said give up your siblings and i'll give you some turkish delight he was like yeah they're over there they're right there go get them they're yours it was Mr. Tumnus, for, the fawn, for, Turkish delight. for, some, for some Turkish delight. And then, and then after, after she turned Mr. Tumnus into stone, she was like, where, where are your siblings? And he, and was, he like, was like, that's what you're going to do to him? Double, Double the Turkish delight. <laughs> I need two boxes. <laughs> and she gave it to him, and he was like, my sister is over there. My brother and my other sister are over there. Go get them. And then, and then that, was that was it. Like, the Turkish delight was it. And then, and then I, I tried like, that because I was like, there's no, no way that it's that good. I also and I was like, right. It was <laughs> not, it wasn't anywhere near I, that good. I like, okay, we we get Turkish Delight pretty often. Because I like it. Of who it's I am it's fine. As a person. And I really enjoy it. I'm not a super sweets person, but I get like, I get the ones with like pistachio and like macadamia nuts and <laughs> rose water and shit. Like. But he got the plain kind, which is essentially I tried your sugar stuff too. and water. I tried your stuff, too. It was ass compared to my family. Yes. No, I agree. And I really actually like it. But do you know that's like the top answer? Yeah, yeah because everybody saw Narnia. That's and what we were you were like, wondering. That makes him. sense. So, yeah, the top answer about like disappointing book foods, it's Turkish, Turkish delight. delight. Because like, would you sell out your siblings? No. Yeah. Even now, no. I wouldn't so, sell out my pets. I, I wouldn't sell out a stranger. Like <laughs> stranger? Oh. No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell out a Turkish stranger. Delight alone. I'd, sell, I'd out. sell out Hitler for Turkish Delight, but I'd sell out Hitler for Free. a I freak. Say. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like whatever. whatever. Like, like, give me a scrap of paper, paper that somebody oh. already wrote on. Like, I don't care. But, but Turkish I, Delight for a family member? Bro. Yeah, no. Nah. I can't think of anything like I. I mean, I've had like butter beer before, but like it was like this like homemade like recipe kind of thing. I wasn't impressed by it, but also it, I'm sure it wasn't didn't have that much effort into it either. So, as a diabetic, what do you mean butter beer? What, what do you mean? What, what I mean? You had it like at Janelle home. Janelle made it. No, 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 no. It was like at a school event, and like someone made it, and they, I was like, oh, okay, this is okay. not the greatest thing ever. Maybe I should make some butter. Butter beer is too sweet for me. Like as a diabetic, I, I maybe can't, I'll make like, you guys some butter beer because I think it could use like if you salt, cold foam, some vanilla almond milk, and got some good soda, and made some caramel. Y'all would like. It. I'm down to try it. So listen, one of my favorite things to do is to mention foods that I like or I think would be interesting. And just watch her go off on, like, how she would make it. <laughs> and sometimes, if I'm lucky enough, she actually wants to try it and she does it. So I get that food. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. Justin, did you have anything? No, actually, I don't. Yeah, I've never watched something been like, yeah, I got to try that. And then, like, tried it. What? Because, yeah, I don't know. All right, here's three things that I will mention that I, I don't know if you had any more questions, but three things that I've always wanted to try and just always seemed appealing. Yeah. Slurm. Uh, it is a soft drink uh, from Futurama. Yep. That sounds explicit. It's, it sounds it's addicting explicit. and it's gross the way they make it. It sounds it's explicit. so gross. 
It is. It should be explicit. <laughs> it's gross. I always thought it was funny. Uh, Spotchka, which is a alcoholic beverage in the world of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know what it's called. I couldn't find it. But in uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Luke is on Dagobah. And he's got like these fish stick style things like he's got. I don't know what it is, but it always intrigues me. What is that? Does it taste good? It's got the weird looking texture, but. Well, he lives in a swamp at that point. No, no, no. Yoda does. But he, he had it in his rations and stuff. Oh, I don't know. Maybe those are one eighth portions. I don't know. Maybe. But it always looked interesting to me as a kid. Are there anything, like, are there any foods that y'all saw in fictional series that wanted to try? Honey from the honey tree. Oh, good one. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. I knew that. <laughs> That's a good one. Honey from the honey tree. Because that honey looked delicious. That is true. What about you, Justin? <laughs> Got to think about it. Well, nothing comes to mind. Nothing comes to mind. Because I'm going to be honest. A lot of times I'm watching TV, I'm eating food. So, like, if I am eating something that's good, I'm not going to be like, ooh, I want to try that because I'm already, I'm already good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, like, pinpoint it, but, like, I've had, like, images in my head pop up of, like, someone eating a chicken leg and it just, like, strips away as they're, like, eating it off and it just, like, looks super gooey. Like, not gooey, but, like, just super, I don't know what's, what I'm looking that's for. That's another sandwich. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. For me, um, one of the other ones, the cheese pizza. Oh, um, goofy yes. Movie. I knew we were going with that immediately. Yes. <laughs> it's a pizza. <laughs> Double cheese. I'm surprised nobody said Chipley food. Oh, yeah. From any, what? Any food from any Ghibli, Ghibli movie. food. Studio Ghibli. Like My Neighbor Totoro, oh. Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away. That ramen from Ponyo looks like it would slap. Yeah, what does Howl really have eat? Great food. Howl eats a full breakfast. The hearts of people <laughs> that wander too close to his castle. Like I said, full breakfast. <laughs> That's what they say, anyway. That's what I'm fueled by. Howl eats whatever. So don't come too them. close to my castle. Apparently, it's in the theaters again at like the end of the month. Yeah, they're also putting um, Interstellar, Tales of uh, Tales of North Sea or Earth Sea. Ooh. Earth Sea. Thank you. And Grave of the Fireflies. You know what else oh. had a really great food scene? Can't do a Grave lot of, of the great Fireflies food again. scenes. I can't do it again. Coraline. Coraline had some good food scenes. I've never seen Coraline. <gasps> Get right with God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I, I wow. Can't, I can't believe we haven't talked about this one. The Peach. James and the Giant Peach. Yes. Yes. I've never seen that one either. That's such a good <laughs> one. Wow. Yo, like that, I said, that Peach had bugs. Get right. That peach had bugs, bugs and it flew all over the place. You, and those birds you, were like James carrying it from right up above. So that you know they were shitting on like, that. Yeah, <laughs> not, 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 like, okay, you could dig into it. And that's where the bugs were, Tim. In my head, like, the, when they were grabbing pieces of the peach, it was like shave ice. Yes. But in peach form. Yeah. Oh my God. so good. Don't, you're so gross. I'm totally, um, I'm totally into it. <laughs> no, I couldn't. Uh-uh. This is this is the the racial divide right here. Okay, yep. no, actually, <laughs> yes, it is. actually, okay, because he gets fed. Do you make your own food, Justin? Yes, absolutely. Okay, he doesn't. Yeah, I married a chef. Why would I? Because I'm busy. <laughs> Yeah, but you're busy making meals yeah, for I later, do. so I can just throw them in the microwave. Are, th- are there any other questions? I feel like we're getting to a tension point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you filled them out. I mean, we don't have, we have to answer these questions. I mean, I just wrote some backup stuff here. But I did have one that's not on here that I think is a good question, though. Is, like, what restaurant or, like, what, um, yeah, like, what restaurant in a movie or TV show do you think you would want to go to? Ooh, off the top of my head, 
in Thumbelina, there's a beetle restaurant <laughs> that I feel like is really swanky, and they'd have really cool shit on the menu. It does look pretty fun. It looks super fun. But again, it's all bug food. So. Yeah, but you're a bug. If you're going I'm to the restaurant. If you're going to the restaurant, you're a bug. No, I'm, I'd be a veil of the fairies. So and you're not going to the restaurant. The context of this restaurant is horrible, so I wouldn't want to be like involved in this movie. But like the menu, like the the restaurant that the guy oh, has yeah. in the menu, that'd be fun. Yeah, make me that burger. The burger. I want yes. that burger. That's yes. basically. That, yeah, that did look. Really I good. am the kind of person that uh, always gears toward a burger. In any context, honestly, I was gonna say Big Belly Burger from the Flash universe. Oh yeah. Okay. What? Bob's Burgers. Mm. From Bob's Burger. Mm. If you had to choose one restaurant food, fast food, quick service, or like all the chain restaurants we listed, what is one basic dish that you're going to go for every time? A burger. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Burger. Besides a burger, I'm going to say the chicken fries and bites box from Checkers. <laughs> Also, Raleigh's, depending on what region you're so in. So, you um, were a real Dairy Queen. Oh, hell yeah. Fan. Mm, yeah, I don't think he knows. Chicken fries? I don't think he knows well enough. I, I agree with oh, you. No, no sorry. I, I keep forgetting he's from Chicago. <laughs> yes. there, there's so, like, a Dairy Queen you, hey, right up the road been, for me. I don't know if you know this, but you could have been getting chicken fries. Or steak fingers. Steak sorry, fingers sorry. with These gravy. Are like the chicken whole time. bites. And fries in a box no, together. No, no, no. A whole no. pound. <laughs> I don't want been... chicken fries. I've no, had chicken fries. No, not chicken fries. Chicken tenders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chicken, chicken tenders. Like, chicken with tendies. fries and gravy. You could have mm. been getting that the whole time at yeah, Dairy Queen. Yeah, see, I don't want gravy with my chicken tenders, Or though. any sauce that you choose. You could have had that the entire time just going to Dairy Queen. Yeah, buddy. This is Dairy Queen, like, literally, like, right down the street from me. Well, so, I mean, I can try probably yeah, still get go, that. Go try it. See what you think. They have steak but they fries, got too. This, like, they have this, like, fire burger, flame broil burger, some some spicy shit. I don't know. It's really good. Well, go try the, the, the chicken fries at Dairy Queen. Also, I, one thing I was really a fan of in Wisconsin when I spent time there was Culver's. Culver's hmm. is really good. Never Culver's been. is good. There's one in Round Rock. It's the closest one. Is there? Yeah. Round, Round Rock, Texas? Yes. <laughs> oh. Because some of my friends in Temple. I didn't know that. One of them in particular is from here. And when I was there, she was like, there's a Culver's in Round Rock. <laughs> I, so well, that's have, how like, I know. It's, she said it was good. They have so. gluten-free buns for like their burgers. So if- oh, good try it. Know. I haven't to know. Culver, I, I, Culver's is good. I think it's pretty decent. Fair enough. I went to Wisconsin for the CrossFit Games. Where in Wisconsin? Madison. And then we always stayed like <laughs> 34, <laughs> 34, 40 minutes, an hour out. And... In the uh, well, see if you're going one way, if you're going our way, you could be in West Milwaukee area. Yeah. But if you're going the other direction, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Bumfuck. Whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's where we were. On yeah. the corner so of Bumfuck, we ate, and you got a we pretty ate nice. at <laughs> We ate a lot of Culver's, or I would be like, "Please take me to a grocery store. I need a salad. I'm so tired." <laughs> Your only options out there are like Culver's and McDonald's, and Grocery stores. So yeah. that's that's what I did. That's how we felt at Youth America when we yes. were doing yeah. the oh youth my leadership. God. Like we had to leave the the campgrounds but weirdly, to go find a salad because it was Oklahoma City, so we could definitely go to Whole Foods, and we did. Yeah. Is is Whole Foods an Oklahoma thing? No, it's an Austin thing. Yeah, it's OG. But they Austin. have a Whole Foods in Oklahoma City. Yes, okay. and they have a they have a hot bar. So. Oh, I just had no idea where it was from. I mean, there's a Whole Foods. Austin. It, it was Austin. Right up the yeah. road. From Austin. Here, so. uh, yeah. Whole Foods is like a very, very OG Austin thing. Interesting. 
like the the guy that founded Whole Foods lived at his store, like showered there, did everything there. So when Am- is very Austin. I did a lot of projects on Whole Foods. Amazing. Well, uh, I think our time is coming to a close in this main segment. Great discussions. Good talks. Good food. Good food. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, when we come back, uh, we will have some fan questions and then end this episode. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. I always forget that the music, uh, Justin can't hear the music. So whenever we go on break, he's just hearing silence. <laughs> Yep, I'm really just you know over here. Help with that commercials. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> I think we need we help getting do. your website off the ground. Wow, I got that pretty, pretty, uh, pretty down there. <laughs> I think what we should do is just like commercials for random companies that aren't paying us that would until be funny. someone decides to pay us. <laughs> what would they do? Like, like I wonder if someone would actually reach out, like, hey, you know what? Here's to your twenty bucks or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like. <laughs> Thanks for recommending us to your listeners, all 17 of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's our listenership? <laughs> Not high. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> I'm fun. here for the fun. Me too. Not for the fame. Same. Same. Uh, well, hey, guys, we got some fan questions. And this is a part of the show where we'd like to answer your questions. Uh, I only have two today, which is good because we're going to end the show quickly. So Alex asked, what is your favorite weirdest food combination? You know, when I was a kid, I used to fuck up a peanut butter jelly bologna sandwich. Didn't you talk about this last episode? Isn't this what you already do? No. no. What did you say last time? You just said PB&J. No, you said... My, my favorite midnight snack was PB&J. With but butter. Eat, with butter. With butter, yeah. So what did you just say? To clarify? Peanut butter and jelly with bologna okay. when, I was, when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that's a weird one. It was weird, yeah. Like, yeah, looking back on it, I feel like I'd punch myself. <laughs> now, like, what are you doing to your body? Stop it. I used to uh, put salt and sugar in a sandwich bag and then bite the corner off because, you know, scissors. You need scissors when you're six or seven years old. And I would eat the salt and sugar mixture slowly. <laughs> That wow. makes sense, kind of. Like, depending on the the levels of each one. Yeah. I tried to, like, 50-50 it. I can't, oh, yeah, no, that's weird. I can't think of any, like, combos that I did. Like, I did some gross ones, like, on dares, like, when I was in, like, school. But, like, I do remember, like, in high school, in marching band, we would have these coolers that we would take with us, like, for water. Like, because you're in the stands and whatever. Well, me and the other Tremone players and, like, the brass section, that we were all way at the top, so the band directors really weren't paying too much attention to us. We would make Kool-Aid. But we didn't just make Kool-Aid. We made what we called killer aid. And we basically just doused the baby with sugar. <laughs> like, it was just, like, this most dense sugar thing. Like, it would put Chris into a, some pretty big trouble if he were to take a sip. But So, Justin, yes. they made Kool-Aid. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing. Supposed is. to be made, yeah. Well, and like what made it gross is like you're you're drinking this Kool Aid and then you're playing your instruments, which all that saliva and stuff goes into your instrument. That's what you're not supposed to do. And so it was a double whammy of like we're drinking this, we're not supposed to, but also it's gonna like hurt our instruments. Okay, so you are very drum major coded. Yes, but you were so committed. Like, like drum major, I was, right? no, no, he wasn't. That's what I'm saying. Oh. So. I feel like you were just so committed to your instrument. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and extracurriculars. I mean, I was, but also wanted to like, blend in and have fun with the other guys. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I caved in certain areas. You would have been a really good drum major. I feel like I could have been. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. But, yeah, I can't think of like, any combinations. Like, I mean. Yeah, I, honestly, me either. Like, I. I, I pickle I feel sickles. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm really good at combining food. So I don't think anything is weird. I did try, um, it was like dill brand, uh, but made a beer. And that was odd. The best made. Oh, like a pickle yeah. beer? Yeah, best made. You're right. The best made pickles. Uh, yes. And I thought it would like it. And I, it's. I it, love anything pickle flavored, but it, I can't try the beer. So it took me a while to get into it, but I was like, okay, I could, I could, I'm not going to like pick this out every time, but like I could drink it 
at a party or something. You actually might be able to find gluten-free pickle offerings. The offerings, <laughs> what <a> yes, phrase. <laughs> but not beer specifically. Well, I got a pickle offering for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um bye. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going anywhere with that? <laughs> nope, nope, we're done with that one. Next you question. Speak the third most Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right. Uh last question. Riley asked, uh, what mystery or phenomenon would you like to solve? Mm-hmm. Like I can only pick one. The mystery of. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know, Chris. You sure you got like a encyclopedia full of it? But did yeah. you just say encyclopedia? <laughs> I hate you. He said it on purpose. I know so he did, much. but <laughs> I don't feel like he said it on purpose. I feel like it he slipped out. No, I think it <laughs> slipped out. He started saying it to be ironic. But is it the right way to say it? He can't. He can't. It's like it. when he started saying literally, literally, and now he can't say it any other way. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, aliens. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't think that's a mystery. But just I, to have proof of it, when, though. When you say solve, I'm thinking like irrefutable proof. Yeah, yeah. Aliens. That's a good one. I will say that if we had solid proof. I feel like we would have figured it out out in the last, like, I don't know, somewhere between 2016 and 2020, I feel like somebody might have blabbed about it. Maybe, like, an orange man. I feel, but, like, I feel like that's why they released the info the way they did, because they knew he would not be able to keep his mouth shut if he had the info. I believe that. I really do. <laughs> well, um, let's, do a, let's do a light launch of Aliens. Yeah. And see how the people take it. What if UFOs are not aliens and they're actually time travelers from the future? That'd be cool. I believe that'd it. be a good mystery to solve. I believe, I believe travel. It. Yeah. Um. Man, that's yeah. This is a hard question actually because it's like there's so much out there that you want to know. And a lot of conspiracies that you can think of too, because you can think of JFK, you can think of um, Illuminati, Big, oh Bigfoot, Bigfoot. Okay, yeah, I like to know. Chupacabras. I I feel like I would probably go a lot further back in time to like some sort of. Mm. I'd like to know more about like ancient history. Oh, like Pompeii. A lot of like things are if, lost like time. the people were like gay lovers or not. That's a mystery that you want to solve. I mean, that's that's just so that's so low <laughs> level, man. I roommates. want something grandiose, man. <laughs> Tell me about Atlantis. History will say they were roommates. <laughs> Atlantis. Atlantis is a good one. Yeah, that's good. Roommates, they shared a bed platonically. <laughs> I would like to know, I think, all, like, mythical creatures so that they could have, like, protections. Oh. <laughs> because. There, there are several movies about that. Are t- yeah. Especially men. That's a great point, though, Justin, like, about history. Like, just, like, wondering if, like, how much of it is lore and how much of it is true. So, like, Troy, like, how much of that was true. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff in the Bible, of course. Um, yeah, I like that. I want to know, like, what a lot of these, like, ancient societies knew that was lost to time. Oh, for sure. You know, or, like, yeah. when, the you know. Alexandria, the Alexandria. burning. Alexandria. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Burning so, down massive historical archives and losing and setting well, and you know that like, they had centuries. already invented right. the steam engine mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah, which like we're taught in the U.S. We're taught about the steam engine, and when was that invented? Eighteen. It was way, way fucking later. Yep. Which is crazy. Yeah, we're talking about when Cleopatra Seven was alive. They had already invented that. In our cat. Yeah. All right, guys. I think this is a great time to wrap up this episode. Probably. Any final thoughts? Food is cool. Food is awesome. Honestly, I think we could do a whole episode about the food of 
Middle Earth. I mean, probably. I'm into it. Let us know when you want to come back. Did we scare you off? No. I promise you she's heard worse things from my mouth. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Don't piss off Harley. Yes, that's a good one. We won't. I mean, that really mostly goes for you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's right. Why are you so mean to me? All right. Uh, I don't have anything else other than to say, so I think we should just close this sucker out. Thank you all again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and leave a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Always More Pod. Chris, where can we find you? I am on Instagram as Captain underscore CT Ford and TikTok as Christopher dot Lionheart. Justin, how about you? Did you hear me? Justin, where can we find you? <laughs> oh, you know, I totally, I totally didn't hear that at all. I'm just like, I was like, oh, wait, what? Are you going to say anything? Um, anyway, I am Justin is theory literally everywhere. And unless I'm not there and then I'm just not. But if I'm there, that's what I am. Nail, where can Fun we find fact, you? That's how I have you saved in my phone. Your phone number. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Saffron ETC. And that's all I've got. Thank you now for joining us for this episode. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to uh, listening to this conversation, being part of it. And remember, there is always more than this. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.